So, yeah, so Felger not a fan of the Patriots transition tagging Kyle Duggar. I, I'll say I don't get it. I, I don't get it in the sense that it's not even the transition tag part necessarily that bothers me. Felger's right. The, the transition tag is this weird thing. Mm-hmm. You Really, the only time you use it is a lower paid position. Like you heard the last guy was a running back. So, all right, that makes sense. Or instances where maybe you don't know what position the player plays. Like Mike Owen went it would have made some sense because – guard tackle right hey we think yeah. you're a guard you think you're a tackle go out there you know show us because if you franchise tag him it's going to caught at 19 million well now he's a, now you're paying him like a tackle no matter what transition mm-hmm. tag you you keep it in the guard uh, area we all know what position kyle duggar plays we know who kyle duggar is he's 27 years old at this point mm-hmm. we know who kyle duggar is as a player i think i actually under undersold that is he 27 or 29 um no, he's 27 we know who Kyle Tucker is at this point. He's 27. He's going to turn 28 later this month. The bigger issue for me, though, is the point of whatever tag you're going to use. Mm-hmm. Transition tag, non-exclusive franchise tag, exclusive franchise tag, whatever tag you're going to use. You do that to keep a player. You may not otherwise be able to keep that you are that you feel you cannot lose. And I don't feel like that describes Kyle Duggar. As good of a player as he is, and he's a good player, they have other good box safeties. They have Jabril Peppers, and they just drafted Marte Mapu with a top 100 pick. Mm -hmm. They have other guys that can get in that role. I think it would be better for them to add a free safety, and you saw guys come available this week like Justin Simmons or Xavier McKinney, who's been a free agent. I think those guys... Big picture might help them more than Kyle Duggar. On top of that, there's a report. There's been a couple of reports in the last 24 hours. One from Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald. One from Mike Reese of ESPN. That Kyle Duggar's camp is upset that he was tagged. And I think we talked about this last week, Sarone, that the franchise tag had not been discussed with him. Yeah. So this came up out of no. Well, so, so what that implies to me, the fact that they are upset by this means they probably weren't in the worst standing before because if they were already upset, the tag's yeah. not going to upset them. So this is a player you maybe could have negotiated with. Let's flip to the other side of things. Mike Onwenu, Mike you need offensive line help. Yeah. You need it. He's your best offensive lineman, and we know for sure now, I think this was assumed, but we know for sure now, my, uh, uh, Trent Brown was on Sirius Radio yesterday. He said he's not coming back, so yeah, we know they're yeah. going to need two tackles. <laughs> And again, not breaking any news here. Don't need the sounder yeah. for that one, Ryan. But you need offensive line help. Onwenu seems determined to go out and get the biggest contract possible. And maybe the Patriots are going to give that to him. But it hardly sounds like a guarantee he's coming back, where it feels like maybe they were on some better standing with Kyle Duggar. Whatever tag you want to use, mm-hmm. whether it's the transition tag. And, and again, I'm not saying... You can debate the merits of the transition tag in your own right. I'm not saying that's not a conversation. I'm saying the bigger conversation is whatever tag they used. I'd be saying this if they used the the exclusive tag. Mm -hmm. They tagged the wrong player. Yeah. I feel like Michael and Wendell was the guy you tag in this situation 100%. Yeah, I can't wait for the first press conference or whatever where they act. They might not even do it, but where they explain the method to their madness here. I would love to know the, the, the reasoning behind it, why you did it. You know, why do teams do it? You know, the uh, in-depth look of what made them come to this conclusion when they sat around the round table and said, hey, let's just do this. Or somebody just throw it out there like, hey, this is something we could use here. But was there a long-term, not discussion, but plan to use this on him? But I do agree a winner should be the number one priority. I think if you're going to do anything, you do whatever you can to keep him in the building. And like you said, safety help is, I think, is far easier to replace or to find than a good tackle. Uh, any good offensive lineman at this point, especially on this this partic- this particular team, so I would I can't wait for them to. They, I hope they do it, but I can't wait for them to explain why they did this, what led to this, and did they feel they weren't going to be able to get anything anything done with with Duggar in the on the long term. And look, they they could get both of them back. Like this is yeah in progress, right? Let me be clear about that. But I just mm-hmm. feel like. You're, as you make the decision in real time, who do you feel better about retaining? And Mike Reese, by the way, had a, a, a lot about this in his notes this morning. 
just about Mike Onwenu representing himself and all of that. And it sounds like that conversation about is he a tackle, is he a guard, is going to come up. Uh, Reese writes, one dynamic with Onwenu is that tackles generally get paid more than guards, and he's played almost evenly at both spots. He gives the, the career starts. Uh, ESPN's Giants reporter Jordan Renan, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, citing sources says Onwenu is hoping for a tackle-based deal. So he's open to playing tackle, mm -hmm. which the Patriots need. Again, I y you can you can hate the transition tag all you want. I'm not knocking that take. I'm just saying my bigger question, like you said, it'll be interesting if they're asked about it. Why Duggar was the guy that tagged? If they come to a deal with Mike and Wendu at twelve oh one tomorrow, yeah, great. I, I worried for nothing. That's fine. But until yeah. then, I think it's a fair question. Yeah, I mean, in I was just about to ask you this. So they can't do anything with the window until tomorrow. No, they, they could, could do, or, or I, I guess I I shouldn't say they could do something tonight. He sounds determined to hit the market and see what's out there. Okay. So that's why I'm using tomorrow as kind of a benchmark. Mm -hmm. But no, they can, and I'm guessing they will. They can re-sign internal free agents anytime. And they've done in the past. I remember a couple of years ago, Devin McCourty re-signed the Sunday night before free agency. If you remember that, uh, they, they had a couple other, I think, trying to remember who the other guys were they've done this a few times where the weekend before so i mean we're running out of the weekend tonight or tomorrow morning they'll re-sign somebody just before free agency opens they did get one other one done this week hunter henry's coming back it's a three-year i think it's like just under 30 million i think it's like three years 29.9 something million dollars for hunter henry makes about the 13th highest paid tight end in football i like it i i, I mean it's a good contract for the player i think a guy that in a tough situation proved to be a good leader, a good valuable veteran voice in the locker room, a guy that is very quarterback friendly. If you're bringing in a rookie quarterback, I just wonder about him in Van Pelt's scheme where you're asking the tight ends to block a little bit more. Maybe they adjust the scheme around that. Maybe there's going to be more 12 personnel. They go out, they get another tight end. Although suddenly you're paying big money to two tight ends to start free agency and a rebuild yeah. and people are going to start <laughs> having flashbacks. But Oh, man, like, it's a good deal. I like the Hunter Henry deal. It's a good deal. They they weren't realistically going to be able to retool the entire offense in one offseason, so this this saves them from having to really take care of one position. That being said, they still should address tight end on day three in the draft and I try to get so. themselves yeah. a developmental player. Absolutely. I want, I want some young legs in there. I think they need to hit. <laughs> I think there's a lot of good young tight ends out there, too. I think you got to get one of these guys, but I'm, excuse me, I'm more shocked that Henry signed here. I thought he was going to go yeah. somewhere where he could be a Super Bowl contender and not so much get his, get his numbers of production. And after last season, like you said, as tough as it was for him, he had to stand up there and take a lot of bullets. I thought he was easily on his way out the door. But for him to stick around, I think that's a good sign for how some of the players feel about the coaches and the, the new guys running the show. So, you know, it, we'll, we'll see how, how this pays off for them. But I was really shocked that he, he stuck around in New England. Any other internal free agents you think they have to have back? Man, I don't. I wish. I wish he wasn't coming off that knee injury. But that Kendrick Bourne would be a good player to keep around. You know, I don't think he'd be. Yeah, yeah. If he's your best receiver, I don't think that's a good thing. But I think he's a good guy to ha have with your depth when it comes to receiver. But you know, coming off that injury, I don't know what his future holds. But he sounds like he really wants to be there, and will do anything to get that done. But. That knee injury, I think, is scaring not just the Patriots, but I think a few other teams.